Good evening, everyone. Uh, just want to go ahead and introduce myself first and foremost. Um, so my name is Abrer Justin Ahmed. Uh, I was born and raised in Long Island, uh, in New York, right us it's New York, downstate New York. Um, I went to undergrad at Binghamton University uh, in upstate. Um, I received my degree in uh, chemistry, um, and I had a minor in history. Um, I did some research and stuff like that. Um, anybody just now tuning in, I'm, I'm going to try to answer questions as I go, but I'm going to tell you my story first, and then I'll try to hit everybody's questions at the end. Um, so, yeah. So, let me start with, first of all, why I'm in this uniform. Um, so, I've been, I've been in EMT um, and in EMT critical care for the last 10 years now. Um, it's been a long time, God. Uh, hi, Dr. Robinson. <laughs> um, so, um, let's just start from the beginning, I guess. So, uh, I've, since I was young, I always wanted to be a physician. Um, I didn't really know what that entailed, and I didn't really have any family that had connections. I had nurses in my family, but no doctors, nobody with higher education. Um, so, when I went to college, I just did what everybody else did pre-med track, bio major first, wound up switching, did chemistry, because uh, it made more sense to me. Um, and while I was in college, I actually uh, found myself getting into EMS, emergency medical services, and I, I got my EMT through and got college credits for it, and then I wound up getting my EMT critical care, which is in New York State is like paramedic light. So yes, I've innovated people and all that stuff, and you know, there's plenty of paramedics and EMTs that wind up going to medical school. Um, so, um, when I graduated from Binghamton, uh, I, my senior year, I wound up taking my MCAT. Uh, I didn't do as well as I would have liked. Um, I took some time off. I wound up getting a job at North Shore LIJ, which is now Northwell, um, working their EMS division. And I worked full time doing that for two and a half years before I was introduced to SABA. Um, I took, I retook my MCAT and I did a little bit better, but still not where I wanted to. I applied to American schools, um, didn't have the, the best luck with that, got waitlisted to a few schools and I applied twice and I actually almost gave up. Um, but interestingly enough, um, I was actually going to go out West, maybe to like Utah and, uh, get my flight paramedic and jump out of helicopters. I figured I was like, you know what, maybe being a physician is not right for me right now. Um, so actually during one of my EMS runs um, in on Long Island, uh, I met a, a house calls physician. Um, it's a funny story, but uh, this, this uh, yeah, he was a young doctor. Uh, you know, he, he kind of just kind of kept looking at me, kind of staring at me. He's like, I recognize you from somewhere. And I was like, doc, I don't know who you are. Um, and, you know, Long story short is, he wound up being, he used to be a nurse with, uh, with my father um, at one of the medical centers on Long Island. And uh, when he left the medical center, he actually went back to school to get his prereqs to go to medical school and actually went to SABA. So he pulled me to the side and he was like, I remember you when you were little, do you still want to be a doctor? And I said, no, I'm not really feeling it. Um, and he was like, have you explored the Caribbean? And I was like, nope, I haven't explored the Caribbean. And then he's like, oh, let me tell you about Saba. And I've never heard of this place in my whole life. I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, and he was like, I said, I don't, I don't know about the Caribbean. I was like, I, you know, I've heard stigma, this, that, and the other. And uh, he actually pulls out his wallet and he pulls out his Saba ID. And he goes, I graduated from Saba. And this guy's a house calls physician for one of the largest health systems in the Northeast region. Um, who's, and he's now the head of geriatrics uh, out in San Diego. So with Saba, the sky's the limit. Um, so uh, basically what happened was uh, he wrote me a letter of recommendation. I wound up applying and I got in. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was like in quick succession. I wound up, you know, um, kind of basically packing up my whole life and being like, all right, I'm going to move to a deserted island that I've never heard of. Um, but... You know, I did my research and he told me about island life and what it's like. He kind of, you know, 
told me the ins and outs. I mean, obviously it had changed because he had graduated and already completed residency and all that stuff. So he'd been several years out of Saba. Um, so I took the chance, uh, you know, I, I met another physician actually through Northwell, through the health system here, um, who was an ED physician who went to Saba as well. Um, so when I got on the island, definitely, uh, definitely a shock. Um, you know, uh, I come from a suburban area and I, I live 40 minutes away from New York City. So urban living is what I'm, urban and suburban living is what I'm used to and island life is, is not. Um, so, uh, but interestingly enough, uh, Seba becomes, you know, like obviously it becomes a second home. Um, as you guys already know, um, Seba and many other Caribbean schools, but I can only speak, speak for Seba, uh, is set up similar to the uh, traditional style of medical practice teaching. Um, so you have your two years of didactic training, um, and then you have your two years of clinical training, and you graduate, you do residency, blase, blase. Um, so, uh, so the two years of didactic is obviously on the island, very, very small island. Um, so just telling you from my experience, you fly into St. Martin, um, and then from St. Martin, you can either ferry or take a small puddle jumper over to the island. Um, and, you know, that's really it. Uh, when you get to the island, uh, everybody's in shock, just like you, all the all the first semester medical students that uh, come in. Um, and mind you, I'd been out of school for two and a half years. I mean, I was working professionally in the um, for the health system in, e in the EMS agency, um, but I hadn't been in a classroom in a, in a while. Um, the cool thing about SEBA is that uh, you meet a lot of people from all different walks of life, uh, and a lot of people had previous careers. I know uh, a friend of, a friend and classmate of mine, Tyrell, who was did a live a little while ago, um, she had a whole career before she went to medical school. And there's other people too. Um, I think there was a pharmacist, there was like someone that was a PT before, you know, people that nurse, there are plenty of nurses. Um, and it was just, you know, everybody's kind of like not in the same boat. Then of course you have your, you know, your normal graduate, you know, bachelor's degree or master's degree straight into a medical degree, which is cool too. Um, but all different walks of life, uh, American and Canadian students, which is, which is cool, because uh, you learn about a different culture. The Americans get to learn about Canadians, you know, and vice versa. Um, so when you first start, you take this course called Scientific Foundations, which is kind of like your intro back into school, back into, you know, um, uh, you know, back into education if you've been out of it for a little while. Um, and it was difficult for me because, uh, again, I hadn't take, sat in the classroom in a very long time. But, you know, uh, the goal was to be a doctor from a very young age. So that's what I did. Um, so uh, from there, you know, I took all your typical classes, that all your typical coursework that you would think that you would take uh, from anatomy to, you know, um, biochemistry, microbiology, pharmacology, pathophysiology, and at Save it's set up a little bit different. They try to integrate the, uh, the coursework together so you get a continuum. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously with any education system, they constantly changing and renovating and reinventing the way it's taught. So the way it was taught for me back in 2015, 2016, 2017 is obviously not the exact same as, it, you know, they, they make little tweaks and things like that. So, um, so yeah, so I worked my way up. So it's, uh, what is it, five semesters? So it's five semesters on the island, which is approximately just about two years. Um, and they're trimesters. So you, you go for like three months at a time and then, you know, you go home for a few weeks and then you come back and it's this vicious cycle. Uh, medical school is not easy, obviously, but if you want it bad enough, you can, you can do it. Um, so yeah, so uh, when when you're on the island, obviously all the coursework is is geared towards preparing you uh, just like an American student and getting you ready for step one, um, being competitive and all that stuff. Um, so there's uh, there's examinations, there's uh, uh, what we call MBMEs, uh, which are subject-based exams that you take, which uh, kind of show you where, where you fit in um, on the curve, basically, with American, beside American students. Um, and then we have a comprehensive exam 
at the end of your fifth semester called, we call it the exit exam. And uh, that's basically like, it's a mock of, uh, of step one. So um, obviously if you score well, if you do well, if you figure out a study strategy, then you just continue that once you leave the island and go to, t to actually take your licensing exam. Um, aside from that, um, there's also a built-in, um, there's, there's like built-in research assignment that you have. So it teaches you about evidence-based medicine that you're going to wind up using when you get to the hospitals and when you get to the wards. Um, so, so there's that as well, um, that you do in the interim when there's like a transitional period between your didactic and your clinical years. So it's like a pre-clinical phase where you're preparing yourself for step one. Um, and obviously Saber provides, they provide resources for you if you ask for it. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a, you know, just to take a step back, there is a mentor mentee program that's built into the island. Um, and there's plenty of clubs and other activities that, you know, to, to make it, to make it just like any other university, um, just like any other medical school, whether it was American, Caribbean, European, doesn't matter. Um, so we have all that stuff. Uh, and also to go back to the island, the island is absolutely gorgeous. The Caribbean is gorgeous. Um, obviously when you're not studying, if you can find some time, if you can get ahead with studying, um, obviously enjoy that as, you know, as much as you can. Um, but obviously school comes first. So some, some people, they could do it. Some people, they can't, it depends. It depends on how you study. It depends on how you, you know, how you do things. Um, but anyways, to continue the journey. So, um, at the time, I think it was our fourth semester, our fifth semester. Um, they actually they actually had a liaison from the head office in the United States come down and kind of give us like a not necessarily a crash course, but a uh, an intro to what clinical medicine is going to be like, where where we have rotations, what you're interested in, where you'd like to rotate, these kind of things. Um, we have affiliates, so I've been looking at the comments because they've been like, oh, who's affiliated with Seba? So um, Caribbean medical schools, um, and again, again, specifically SEBA, they have affiliates. They're not like affiliated with like one university or like a whole conglomerate like that. Um, they're more so affiliated with individual hospitals um, and then some, some like combination of hospitals and this, that, and the other. Um, but we have affiliates. We have affiliates just like anybody else does in the Caribbean. And there's plenty of rotations in all kinds of services for you to do. Um, so when my clinical medicine years start, so your third year is like your core clinical rotations, which is like your OBGYN, your internal medicine, your surgery, which everybody has to take. Um, and then you have your elective rotations, which is, uh, you know, stuff that you're interested in. And, uh, SAVA has like a database, you know, once you get to that point to kind of help you with, uh, and guide you on your path of where you want to rotate and things like that. Um, so for me, I specifically chose to, um, rotate in the Northeast region cause I'm from New York. Um, and I wanted to kind of stay in driving distance. I didn't want to fly. Um, there was one rotation I had to fly for, but you know, it, it worked out in the end and it was a good experience. Um, but you know, that was just, that was for me, uh, you know, I could kind of like be home and it was just easier. And, uh, luckily enough, uh, I actually was able to maintain my employment. It's like, it's like almost like a seasonal student, um, for my EMS agency. So when I had a weekend free or whatever, I could drive back and, and work on an ambulance to kind of keep up my clinical skills and, um, and actually utilize some of the stuff that I learned from medical school in practice. Um, so yeah. Uh, so fourth year comes. So, oh yeah. And then in your third year, obviously you prepare for step two, your, uh, clinical knowledge exam and, uh, your clinical skills exam and SAVA gives you tools. Um, obviously they give you like homework assignments and things like that to keep you on your toes and prepare you obviously as best they can, um, aside from the rotations that you do at wh whatever hospital. And just like with any, any kind of education, whether it's bachelor's, master's or doctorate, um, and wherever you go, you make the best of, obviously you make the best of your education. So obviously if you want, if you want to strive for greatness, it doesn't matter where you go to Sabo or you go anywhere else. Um, you have to push for that. So, um, yeah, so they treat you like an adult at Sabo, which is, which is, which is good. Um, so in your third year, you're preparing for your step two, your CK, your CS. Um, 
So, and on the island, just to go back, they do, uh, they do have a clinical skills lab where they teach you how to take blood pressures and do proper abdominal exams and all the normal stuff that they would teach you. Um, and they're standardized patients. Uh, the locals are, are really kind to the students. They've had a great working relationship with the school for several decades now. So, um, so, you know, you're, you're going to get, you're going to get experience. Um, and, you know, it's just speaking from my personal experience on rotations, uh, SABA students are one of the most hardworking and most recognized Caribbean medical students that rotate at those particular hospitals. Like all the attendings, all the nurses, all the staff are like, you SABA students just like work so, so hard to be here and work so, so hard to, to be recognized. And, and it's, it's nice when you hear that, you're like, oh God, you're like, all right, I made it to the right place and I'm doing the right things. Um, so we try to keep that up as best as, as possible. Um, so then in your fourth year, you start electives. Um, so, um, your, my fourth year focused on emergency medicine. Um, but there's also some prerequisites that you have to fulfill for the, for the school. Um, but I focus on emergency medicine. So I had several rotations in emergency medicine to kind of, um, boost my, boost my CV, boost my resume, boost my application for ERAS and for residency for matching. Um, so for me, um, as most of you know, there are very, there are a lot of very competitive specialties, emergency medicine being one of them. Um, I have a passion for emergency medicine that spans many, many, many years ago. Um, you know, I, I thought I was going to be a pediatrician when I first, you know, got into medicine. I was like, oh, I, I like kids, you know, I like dealing, I like outpatient stuff, da, 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 da. And over time, my, you know, my outlook on medicine just kind of shifted and this is where I feel that I belong and that I can do, be the best physician. So um, just a fun little story, just to go back. Uh, when I was 18, it was my first job at a hospital. You know, a lot of people volunteered at hospitals or clinics or whatever, candy striped or whatever. Um, but I actually worked as a security guard, 18 years old as a security guard in a hospital, just to, just to be in the hospital, just to get experience. And there was a moment that changed my life forever, a small community hospital in Long Island. Um, I had a, a GSW, a gunshot, um, that came in and this is not, a, it was not a trauma center. Um, so I just remember it was late at night. It was a pretty packed ED. It was like summertime and, um, somebody came in, somebody dragged, literally dragged a body in front of me and was like, save my friend, flipped the body over and there's three shots to the chest. So apologize if it was a little graphic, but I mean, that moment changed my life forever because I was frozen, 18 years old. I'd, I'd never seen that before. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why I got into EMS and emergency medicine. And, but that's where it comes from because I told myself that I would never be um, useless is what I, as, as rough and as, as harsh as it sounds, I thought, I told myself I'd never be um, a useless individual in an emergency. So emergency medicine was the key. Um, so in my fourth year, I did, uh, emergency, uh, I did emergency, uh, rotations at hospitals that SABA students had matched at, even in other specialties, because I knew that we would be recognized. You know, you just kind of have to, you have to use the system to your advantage. Um, SABA puts out a, a listing of residency matches for every year for the last God knows how long they have it on their website. I think they should. I remember they had it when I was, when I first started and they had it a couple weeks ago when I last looked. Um, so I rotated there and I got great letters of recommendation and things like that. Um, but I did have backups. Uh, I did apply to uh, family medicine and internal medicine as well. So I actually applied to three specialties um, just in case. Uh, you know, yes, there's all the stigma about international medical graduates, foreign medical graduates, the whole nine, I get all that. And I, I recognize that. And being someone who didn't have, you know, extended friends or family that had went through this process, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to apply broadly. Um, and that's what I did. I, as, as, as much as you can afford to, 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 to get there, you, that's how you do it. Um, I also partook in uh, some, I went to, I think like two or three conferences uh, reach, where residency programs were like, hosting things and you know I, I spoke to program directors and I told them that I was from Caribbean school and I had my CV ready and I 
you know, I made sure that I was like really, really networking. So, I mean, you still have to network even through medical school. Um, and you want to do things, you know, special projects, like during clinicals, like I did a couple of case studies for attendings and resident, like, and, and chief residents, just so I could like get my name on a publication and things like that. And there are those opportunities. You just have to open your mouth and ask. Um, and of course, like I said, save the students have a, have a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Have a reputation, a good one, a uh, reputation for working hard and being able to handle the stress and the pressure and this, that, and the other. And we have great numbers. So, um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, so, uh, as far as the, um, match process goes, I'm just going through the timeline. Um, so I applied to many programs all over the country, uh, obviously predominantly emergency medicine, um, uh, I got, a, I got a decent amount of interviews, actually, across all the specialties that I applied to. Um, and it's funny because Brookdale, where I currently matched at right now, and I actually start on Monday, which blows my mind. Never thought I'd be at this point. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, Brookdale was my, my last emergency rotation, which was in December of last year, so December 2019. So I worked Christmas, the whole nine. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I just, I just remember I was like, I had applied to that program. I met the program director like at a conference and he was like, send me your CV, this, that, and the other. And I was like, I was like, of course, you know, and you know, uh, just that anticipation of like waiting, like to hear back from program director or hear back from the program coordinator for the residency, like, oh yes, we want to invite you for an interview, whatever. You're just like, please, please, yeah, like checking your email all like that fall, last fall, I'm telling you, it was just like every day my, I was just checking my email. I had my alerts on. I was like ready. I was like, who's, who needs me for an interview? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, so luckily during my rotation, he actually pulled me to the side and was like, listen, he's like, I've heard really good things about you from the attending nurse managers, nurses. He's like, I, he's like, I, he's like, I didn't forget you. I remember you from the conference. He's like, I want to invite you to, to one of our interviews. I said, absolutely, sign me up. He's like, I'm going to pull you up to schedule for your rotation for that day so you can come and enjoy and relax. You know, he's like, I see how hard you work. I was like, great. I was like, awesome. And I was like, it was a blessing in disguise. Um, so, I, you know, the interview went, obviously, I think it went well. Um, and, uh, you know, then you just, it just kind of, it just kind of ends, you know. Jan, you know, end of January is when, you know, interviews stop. And I think I had my last interview in like January 15th or so. So, um, so yeah. So then, uh, I was finishing up elective rotations. I had back to back electives. Um, and then of course, as you guys already know, COVID January, you know, we start hearing things about, uh, about China and this, that, and the other, and we're like, ah, it's not going to hit us. And, uh, little do we know, obviously it wound up hitting us. So I'm in the middle of rotation and, uh, I think I was at Bridgeport, Bridgeport Hospital, which is a Yale hospital, which is which we are affiliated with, and we do a lot of rotations there. Um, and uh, we, I just remember it was like it's like March, and you know it's uh, that match week, and you're like, oh my god, you know, that weekend you're like stressed out. Everybody goes through it, whether you're confident or not, whether you had a thousand interviews or you had five interviews or one interview, it's, it's still stressful. And that Monday, it said, hey, congratulations, you matched. I was like, oh, my God, thank God. Now, mind you, I didn't know it was going to be emergency medicine, but I was hopeful. And Friday, I got exactly what I, I, I asked for. I asked for my first choice was Brookdale Emergency Medicine, very large trauma center in uh, Brookdale, in, I'm in, in Brooklyn, um, which is the Brownsville area. Um, and, you know, I was just, like, jumping for joy. And then, um, obviously, then COVID hit the States, and then, it, you know, rotations got a little funky. But um, I think this is a, like a once in a, I mean, it's not going to hit our generation again, another world pandemic, but um, I hope not. But uh, so rotations got a little funky. Um, but again, you know, that, that doesn't mean that that's the same experience that you guys would have if you wound up coming to SABA. Um, so I wound up finishing my rotations around April. Um, and yes, I graduated. Uh, so that was I had a, we had the Zoom graduation because obviously because of COVID, um, and yeah, so and now I'm a, a physician, which blows my mind. I never thought that you know, oh God, five year old Justin, I go by Justin, would be amazed that I actually got to this point. 
Um, and yeah, I still worked all through my electives, all through, all through medical school. I worked when I could. Um, and then as soon as I finished rotations in April, I've been on an ambulance every day, basically every day, helping out the greater New York City area, downstate, uh, downstate New York, Westchester County, Long Island. Because as everybody knows, if you watch any news, uh, COVID hit New York probably the hardest. Um, and now um, I actually, because um, several of my directors and admin administrators know that you know I graduated from medical school and I guess they had faith in me, uh, they actually put me in charge of uh, COVID testing. So I actually just got back from doing that. Uh, we, Northwell Health, the health system I work with actually partnered with the Department of Health for New York State, um, and we are running uh, COVID testing sites all through the five boroughs. So I'm actually a site lead for one of them, and I do the the, no, the nose swab and the serology testing for. I help administer the nose swab and serology testing for for free for the community. Um, so that's my project now, and I'm doing that all the way up until residency, which starts on Monday. I get my badge and my white coat on Monday. Blows my mind. Um, so yeah, so that's my that's my story in a thirty. No, it wasn't really thirty minutes. It was like a twenty-five minute nutshell. Um, but yeah, so that's that's me. Um, so I'm just gonna scroll back in some of these comments and see what people asked if I can answer any of these questions. Uh, and I just want to let everybody know that there is a there's a representative. Uh, will help answer some questions uh, and you can reach out to um, the admissions team uh, they can answer a lot of the, the questions like exactly um, because again my experience would be a little bit different and uh, they you know they have more answers than I do at this point uh, so yeah I answered the Northwell question uh, somebody asked about student student support earlier so like I said um, you know, there's a mentor mentee program. So when you're on the island, uh, you know, your fr your friends, your your peers become like family. You you are on, you know, we joke, we call it the rock. You're you're literally on a rock. Um, and uh, you're completely isolated from a lot of things. Uh, you know, there's no fast food. <laughs> you know, things are closed on Sundays cuz uh, you know, it's it's a little different. So um, the students actually support each other and obviously the school supports us as well. But I feel like for me, my personal experience, um, we supported each other. Um, and obviously uh, our student government, which I was also a part of, I forgot to mention, um, we did our best to, to be the bridge between our, you know, our medical school administration on the island, our basic sciences administration, and the student body. So we did our best and uh, that's still in effect on the island. Uh, Somebody asked about MCAT and enrollment. I'll let the admissions team deal with that. They know better because obviously COVID met, made things different, so I don't know. Uh, okay, someone earlier asked about uh, being skeptical about SEPA. So I was, I was one of those people that was skeptical, um, but look at me now. I, I have my diplomas upstairs in, in my room. Um, it's like a real diploma. <laughs> Uh, my ECFMG certification came in the mail two days ago, so I know that the, the governing bodies of foreign medical graduates in the United States recognize the degree. So, I mean, I, I'm living proof that, you know, it is credible. Um, and me personally, from from other medical students that I've rotated with at, from other schools, from other Caribbean schools, even American schools, SEBA is, is actually not that expensive, it's not nearly as expensive as other places. So there is a question from, I think, Bright. Uh, and everybody's worried about the USMLE change, pass, fail. I, you know, listen, nobody knows. Even American students don't know what that means. So. I don't even think Sabre could answer that question because that's that goes way above. That's that's a national thing. It has nothing to do with Sabre. Um, no, can't say it right. Um, as you guys already know, um, I, I don't know if the listing is still up, but we we do match in some competitive things. We match in surgery. We match in OBGYN. 
we match in internal medicine, and we match in you know family medicine, we match in emergency medicine. We had a couple of people match this this cycle. Um, we've had people match in the past, and oh, we've had people this cycle match in neurology. You know, like we match in uh, some very competitive specialties. Um, so I know someone mentioned that. Let me see what else we got here. Yeah, I'm going to take any questions, by the way, because I, I, I think I'm done telling my story. So, uh, Monica, why did I choose Seba? So, uh, <laughs> I chose, you know, I think it's fate. I think it was destiny. Uh, I, I said earlier in the video, if you scroll back, but I'll say it again. Um, I was working, I was actually going to, to an emergency assignment and a house call physician. We have a family medicine, we have family doctors on Long Island that actually drive out to people's homes, elderly um, to take care of them so they don't have to come for visits. Um, and, uh, basically, you know, he happened to know me from when I was like seven, eight years old. And he was like, I know you always want to be a doctor. He's like, you should really consider Seba. And he told me all about it, showed me pictures. And that's why I chose Seba is literally because of him. Um, so I give it, I give credit to Dr. Timothy Lopez. Gotta give him a shout out. Um, he's, he's great. Uh, what else? That's why I chose Seba. Shazi said, how many months did I stay on the island? So it's, it's trimesters. So it's like about three months, three months is each semester. So approximately. Um, and so you're on the island. Oh God, I'm not going to sit here and calculate it out, but you're on the island for like 15 to 18 months, something like that. Um, what else? Adrian asked, what was my study technique on the island? Oh boy. <laughs> well, um, I am a, I'm definitely a visual learner. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're swamped with PowerPoints and there's textbooks and you name it. There's a, so many, so much study material out there. Um, it really, you know, there's Anki cards, there's, you know, there's flashcards that you can write out. There's, there's so many things. Me personally, um, I like studying with people. I just, it's, I learn when I teach somebody else or like have a conversation or uh, a discussion with somebody else. So that was my study strategy. So like I literally, there was a, a group of friends that I had that I literally studied with every single day. It was like, we just, we would literally go over the PowerPoint and read each slide and da da da, da or, you know. So that was my study technique. That doesn't work for everybody. Um, there were people that were just like, put on headphones, lock me away in the library, don't talk to me. Let me rewrite the notes. That necessarily didn't work for me. Um, you know, um, I think it's really important to really pay attention. Uh, I, I can't say that, let me put it to you this way. Even now I'm still learning how to study. I'm almost 30 years old and I'm still learning how to study prop like appropriately. Um, so your study, <coughs> excuse me, your study technique is gonna evolve over time. You're going to get to the island, especially if you've been out of school for a little while, and you're going to be like, okay, I know how to study. And uh, you really don't. Um, and But the cool thing is, like I said, a lot of my peers came from all different walks of life. They had all different kind of degrees, um, masters and this. One of them had, a, I, one of my friends had a PhD. You know, like it, everybody has a different style, and you just kind of learn off each other. Um, and you, you just, you make it work. That's as simple as that. Um, but yeah, any other questions? I try, I try to hit as, as many. Monica, that's a good question. Um, did I have any single moms in my class? I think, I think there were, there were, there were, se you know what? There were several parents in my class for certain. I can't remember, I, I can't sit here and recall exactly, you know, who was single, divorced, whatever. Um, but there were, there were definitely people that had children on the island. Um, actually one of, one of my classmates, um, he literally had a baby and came and he came like right to school, left his, his wife and child at home. They wound up moving to the island like the next semester, but like, you know, the goal was for him to become a doctor. So, I mean, it's, it's possible. I mean, I don't personally have children, so, you know, I can't attest to that, but it's, it's been done. I had classmates that did it. So, so yeah. 
Um, any other questions? I'm trying to see. I'm trying to trying to hit as as many people with 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 um, any questions. How is the health care for the students on the island? That's a that's a good question. Um, so obviously there's a there's obviously it's not a hospital it's a it's a clinic we call it's, they call it a hospital it's a clinic um, and uh, you can um, obviously get like regular medical care there obviously um, anything serious uh, we actually you know, I had a classmate that actually wound up needing something serious and he was actually flown to St Martin which actually has like a, a larger hospital like trauma center type deal um, and then obviously God forbid it happens and I'm not speaking you know for Seba I know but other students that I've, I've met in the Caribbean have been flown all the way back to the States for care if, if, if need be it happens you know I mean obviously most of us are healthy I would think so but yeah um, and also there you know in, you know we don't talk about this enough but uh, we do have a uh, we, we do have a psychologist that's actually attached to the medical school. So if you need a, like a therapy session, we, we do have that. Um, we, uh, yes, Dr. Robson did teach me microbiology and I was one of her TAs for virology specifically, but I was one of her TAs. Um, but yeah, so um, even mental health, we, we do have that on the island um, as well. Um, and as far as clubs go, I mean, it's not necessarily healthcare, but spiritual health. I mean, we, we have, we have a Christian student association, Muslim student association, you know, we have, you know, there are students on the island that, um, we have students on the island that, uh, excuse me, uh, it was work. <laughs> I apologize. But we do have students on the island that obviously take care of each other. Like I said, you, you become a family, so you guys kind of, everybody kind of works together. Dr. Razak, uh, good to see you, Doc. Um, but yeah, uh, I actually have asthma, or I had asthma, you know. Um, I brought all, I literally asked my doctor, my, my doctor, my family physician in the States, I said, hey, listen, I'm gonna be on the island for God knows how long. He just wrote me a prescription for, um, hi, Dr. Bolo, <laughs> jokes, but he just wrote me a prescription for like, like three, four months, you know what I mean? And then obviously when I flew home, if I needed a refill, I would have a refill for inhalers and things like that. But the island also has that stuff available as well. I've got like in an emergency situation, like we have that. Um, so yeah, so I mean. I'm I'm a planner, uh, so when I when I did uh, when I worked for Northwell, I, I worked on the the FEMA team, which is a special response team. So we did disaster relief and stuff like that. So like I'm used to like uh, living with like six pairs of six pairs of uniforms, and that's it. And you just cycle through, and you throw your your clothes in the wash with you know the rest of the paramedics and EMTs and supervisors that are you know working hurricane relief or whatever. So. You know, I, I don't know, that's just me, you know, for things like that, like healthcare on the island and asthma medications, like that kind of thing, I just brought extra stuff with me. Um, let's see. Any other questions, comments, concerns, things that you wanna know? Anything, let me know, I'm still here. I just want to say thank you to everybody that's watching the live. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, this is my first live. This is my first time doing this. I'm not a social media person, um, but the school reached out to me and uh, you know they wanted to me to share my story, so I figured I would. But yeah, just uh, yeah. But but I'll give it like another two minutes and if nobody else has any questions, I, I'll tune out. Uh, you're welcome, everybody. Um, if if there's something that you think of later, uh, question, comment, concern, and you wanna leave a comment in this, you know, even though the live will be done, leave a comment, I'll, I'll check the page then for the next couple of days, even though I'm working, 
but I'll check, you know, even like on the weekend, I'll look and if I can answer it, I'll answer it right in the comment section. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks guys. I was like kind of nervous uh, doing this. I was like, Oh God, it's like, I'm better face to face. I don't, I don't really do this like electronic thing. Not a, Oh, that's a good question. How difficult is a program at Seva? Let me put it to you this way. It's just as difficult as any other program. Um, every, you know, Seva, just like any school, like even when I went to undergrad, you know, uh, Binghamton is, you know, good for some things, but Syracuse is better for other things. And Buffalo is better for this and NYU is better for that. It doesn't matter um, how difficult the program is. Um, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's medical school. It's not a walk in the park. It's not supposed to be. Um, Saba expects highly of you. Um, they crank out the best of, they usually, I mean, for the most part, they crank out the best of the best. Um, so yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so yeah, but uh, as far as difficulty of the program, um, that's a, that's a, it's a rough question, but it's just as difficult as any other program. They, and they expect a lot from you, and you just have to step up to the plate. If you're willing to, to make moves and do that, then you're in the right place. And it's just going to – let me put it this way. It's just going to make you a better doctor. Um, I'm just going to answer the questions, the comments in order. Are there any major financial issues that come? So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I apologize if I don't know the exact – structuring but SEVA is title four which means that for american students which means that you can you get graduate loan you get graduate medical loan for going to medical school so that's how i did my loan so my all my my loan is through the federal government through the u.s federal federal government um i'm not canadian but i know all the canadian students that i spoke to they did it all through their banks and da da da, da. i don't know how that works but i can speak to the u.s um, and Habib, your question, as far as like applying with 90 credits or flow vouchers, in my honest opinion, this has nothing to do with the school. This is just me. I'm not speaking on behalf of the school in this very instant, but I think that getting higher education makes you a better medical student. Like if I had went and got my master's, which I actually thought about doing, uh, but wound up not because I wound up being so involved in my career, I think that I would have been able to study better and I, I, I just I think I would have been better off if I had higher like even higher education but I mean I still pulled through I still I still got I still came out of it with an MD so it doesn't matter um, but I mean when I when I was growing up I was taught that uh, you got a bachelor's degree you had to complete a degree and then go to medical school so that's just me so to answer that question Anyone else? These are some actually really good questions. Uh, so people are asking like the actual like good stuff. And I'm trying to highlight as much stuff as possible that I wish I knew when when I was applying and when I was looking into it. So gotcha, brother. No problem. Um I'm just, I'm just going to scroll through the comments again, just see if I missed anything. I just got to give a shout out to all the, all of my old professors that tuned in. Uh, I had some really great relationships with a lot of my professors um, that were both physicians, uh, like MDs, clinicians, also researchers and scientists that had PhDs and came from large programs and did all that stuff. And I, I you know, they, it's cool because they came from all walks of life. They had so much different backgrounds and uh, they all had their own quirky teaching styles, but you just kind of, you just kind of go with it. So. But I want to I want to say thank you to all my professors that tuned in. Um, they're they're all great. I, I appreciate you. If, if it wasn't for you guys, I obviously wouldn't be at this point. So thank you. 
Uh, what's best undergrads to study in order to be the most successful in medical school? Do you have any idea how to approach back to Canada? And okay, so let me, there's three questions back to back, so I'm gonna hit them in order. So um, let me put it to you this way. Um, your prerequisites for medical school, which is at the time when I was getting prepared, this was years ago because I graduated from college in 2013. Um, you know, uh, two semesters of biology, two semesters of chemistry, two semesters of organic chemistry, two semesters of physics, a math, your English, that kind of stuff. All of that stuff is supposed to set you up for your MCAT, which is then supposed to set you up for medical school. So there is no best degree in undergrad. It doesn't work that way, um, just so you know. Uh, so there's that. Um, do you have any idea how difficult it is to practice in Canada? So a lot of my classmates actually this year matched in Canada and I, it was very impressive. I'm so happy for them. A lot of them wanted to go home. They were like, listen, America's cool and everything, but I really want to practice in Canada and they did it. Uh, so it's, it's a hundred percent doable. Um, you got to make it work. You know, um, some people, you know, like me had backgrounds and had careers in, in medicine already in Canada. Um, so there were classmates of mine that were paramedics in Canada, that were nurses in Canada. So they had somewhat of a working relationship with certain hospitals and universities. So they, the best thing to do is obviously network and keep those ties because those could be ins in the future when you start applying for residency. Um, you know, obviously going away to the Caribbean, there's, there are some extra hurdles, but you know, it's doable hundred um, percent. It's, and, and everything in life is difficult when you go into higher education and, and going for employment. You know, there's more and more F, uh, IMGs that are applying uh, for, for practice. So, you know, you're, it's, it's all a competition, unfortunately, but you just do the best you can as a, as a student and as an applicant. Uh, and then we we'll change the question. There will not be a negative impact on the country work from the MG scores. Yeah. Yeah, Stavros is talking about um, the USMLE pass fail for step one. Again, it is literally changing over the next couple of years. So SABA can't attest to anything. I can't attest to anything. I don't know what it's going to be in the next couple of years. So, you know, yeah, theoretically it should favor us. Right. But who knows? We get, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, but as far as preparing you for the exam, SABA does that. So, um, and obviously you have to put in the work. It's as simple as that. It's two-way street. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns? So, if nobody else has anything, I'm going to get out of my monkey suit. Um, yes, you're welcome. Anytime. Like I said, for anybody tuning, just now tuning in, uh, yes, Dr. Bolo is correct. We were, I felt like I was actually more prepared for, st well, Obviously, once you start doing clinical rotations, you feel more prepared. I was even more prepared for step two. So, so yes. Um, but I just want to say thank you for, to everybody for tuning in. Um, anybody that just tuned in or just tuned out, uh, just a reminder again, if you think of a question, a uh, comment or concern, just, excuse me, leave a comment um, and I'll, I'll look at it in the next couple of days. Um, and if I see it, I'll just, I'll literally just reply on there. Um, but yeah. So again, I said thank you for the thousandth time. Thanks everybody for tuning in and have a good night. I think that's it. Pretty short. And oh, also please be safe and wear a mask. Because, you know, I'm testing a lot of people and just please wear your mask. All right. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks.